By the way, PPS is used a lot in um, horse racing. Generally, they'll use it prophylactically before competition season because of how well it helps to maintain collagen, extracellular matrix, and cartilage. <clears throat> All right, PPS or pentosin polysulfate sodium. So this is not a peptide. I include it in everything like this because you can really only find it in its injectable form sold by the compounding pharmacies that make the peptide. So it gets included, it's like grandfathered in. Okay, it's a semi-synthetic polysulfated xylan, which is basically a modified glycosamine and glycan. Okay, it is actually an FDA approved medication for interstitial, interstitial cystitis and bladder pain syndromes. Okay. The, the older research showed it worked really well. New research shows it doesn't work that great for IC, and I don't, haven't dug into that research because I don't treat IC, but, so I don't know if that's just a, while well, they're doing better research studies or if something uh, else is different. Um, but in this form, for IC and bladder pain syndromes, they're taking it orally, okay? However, for NEOA, it has some really interesting results, okay? It can affect pathways involved in inflammation, like NF-kappa B and the IL-1 beta NOS pathway. And there's also a research study that came out just last year that showed it can actually help with the pain that is associated with advanced bone lesions that you would typically see with osteoarthritis, okay? Here's the, one, the first study uh, on PPS for knee osteoarthritis in uh, 1992. Yeah, 1992. Okay, so they did, this was six, they did six, intra, four to six intra-articular injections, and in this study they saw improvements, okay? So that was the first study, they did intra-articular. By the way, PPS is used a lot in um, horse racing. Generally, they'll use it prophylactically before competition season because of how well it helps to maintain collagen, extracellular matrix, and cartilage. So here's another study that looked at patients with uh, Kellgren, Lauren, grade one to three. So this is our mild to moderate osteoarthritis. They did two milligrams per kilogram sub-Q weekly, once a week for six weeks, okay? What we see here now, this was not, this was an open clinical trial, which means it's not double blinded. So, you know, you have to take that into consideration because there's no placebo to know if this was a saline injection, would they have had the exact same outcomes? But what we do see is that we see a reduction in VAS or visual analog score that continues out to a year past this six week trial. Okay, so they're seeing actually long term results. And then over here, this is degree of flexion, because with osteoarthritis, one of the bigger complaints other than pain is a loss in range of motion, okay? So these patients start to regain their range of motion that again, also was statistically significant out to a whole year, okay? And then this here was looking at their, uh, the Womack pain uh, scores between them. So again, we see a, this was not statistically significant and, and I included it because of that but it uh, showed a trend towards uh, lower Womack scores. For anyone who doesn't know, Womack scores are um, basically a scoring system for osteoarthritis. So going back, this was 2010. Oops, wrong way. Going back five years, there actually was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial where they did Similar injections, okay. They, I believe this one was bi week. They did it twice a week injections for six weeks as well, or sorry, for four weeks. So they did the eight doses over a four week period. And what we're seeing here is that our, uh, I can't read this one. Oh, our stiffness, okay. So here is our placebo where they use saline. Here is our PPS, okay. So in terms of morning stiffness, how long that's lasting, we see a great reduction that was statistically significant that then Eventually, at 24 weeks, it wasn't uh, statistically significant anymore, but during this time period, it was. And then over here is our VAS score. So again, our visual analog score for pain. 
And again, in our, uh, in our um, PPS group, we're seeing a reduction in pain scores that were uh, statistically significant compared to saline. So we know, based off this and this study putting these together, that we do have some, uh, some weight behind PPS for osteoarthritis. Uh, this study here was the new one that I was talking about that came out in September that basically showed that the PPS inhibited our basal secretion of uh, TNF-alpha as well as pro-NGF and NGF secretion, <clears throat> excuse me, and also reduced the what's called the TNA-alpha induced levels of the collagenase MMP13. So MMP13 is a really terrible matrix metalloproteinase that breaks down cartilage. TNF alpha, <clears throat> excuse me, TNF alpha induces MMP13 and therefore contributes to joint degeneration. So in research studies, what they'll commonly do is they'll take the, they'll take the, um, the cartilage, the chondrocytes, they will add TNF alpha to it, and they'll add whatever they're testing. So in this case, they added PPS and the TNF alpha to it. And when you compare that to just adding TNF alpha, the rate of MMP13 production was lower. So we could make a, a semi-strong case that, okay, if we put PPS inside of a joint, then we might see a reduction in this matrix metalloproteinase 13, which could help shift the catabolic to anabolic environment, which could then help with uh, regeneration of the cartilage. And this is basically how I classify and think of uh, PPS. It's helping stimulate collagen synthesis and it's helping stop collagen breakdown, or sorry, cartilage breakdown, okay? So I don't really use PPS for much anything else outside of uh, NEOA. I've not had a patient with like subtalar or talocrural osteoarthritis to test this on. Um, I've only had a NEOA so far. Uh, here's how I dose it, okay? Two milligrams per kilogram IM injection uh, you can do sub-Q because the studies show that, but I just prefer I am. Twice a week for about six to eight weeks. The reason there's that six to eight weeks is because the vial size that it comes in, right? So if a patient has, and the, the patient I'm thinking of, he weighed about 80 kilos, so we did 160 milligrams, and he ended up getting seven weeks out of the vial that he, that he purchased, okay? So in a smaller patient, I'm totally okay going out eight, nine weeks because there's nothing in the research showing us that going for longer is detrimental. If anything, it might actually be a little bit better. Um, and then if we're gonna do intraoperative, so I'm actually going to inject PPS into the knee joint, I'm gonna do about 250 to 500 milligrams inside the knee joint. And that just depends on, I'll do higher for grade four and lower for kind of grade two to grade three. And then post-procedure dosing on this one, I'm still kind of playing around with this. So right now I'm still just doing the two milligrams per kilo, but um, I'm experimenting with different ones. And next time I give this talk, it might be different. And then here's who I'm using it on, okay? NeoA, where we have subchondral bone marrow edema, and, then the, uh, and definitely our patients with grade four severe osteoarthritis. 